Hi, I'm Alderman Altenay. And I'm Michael Thompson. And welcome to another episode of Movie Review TV. Movie Review TV. We see films as they are. Rate them out of five stars. Movie Review TV. Movie Review TV. Well done, Michael. That was excellent. Original <laughs> song there by the one and only Michael Leonard Thompson. Yay. Well Yay. done. Excellent work. Thank you very much. And today we are going to be reviewing The Commuter. Have you seen The Commuter? Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts after uh, this. Michael, what's uh, The Commuter about? The Commuter. This is a 2018 action thriller film directed by Jean Collette Serra and written by Byron Willinger. Philip de Blassie and Ryan Engel. The film stars Liam Neeson, Vera Farmiga, Patrick Wilson, Jonathan Banks, Elizabeth McGovern and Sam Neill and follows a man who was unwittingly recruited into a murder conspiracy after meeting a mysterious woman while on his daily train commute. The film premiered in New York City on January 8, 2018 and was theatrically, theatrically. Re theatrically released in the United States on January 12, 2018 by Lionsgate and on January 19, 2018 in the United Kingdom by Studio Canal. It has had a selected IMAX release and the film has grossed $105 million worldwide. $105 million, that's million. quite a bit of money there. Yep. So what did you uh, think uh, of The Commuter, Michael? The Commuter, I actually really love this thriller. I did, it reminded me a bit of Speed. <laughs> That's, okay. you know, the, the movie from about what was Speed done in the early 1990s mm -hmm. with Keanu Reeves. Because the whole thing is um, set uh, on a train, obviously. Well, all, all the, the main crux of the film is set on a moving train, um, you know, waiting to, till it gets to its last stop. Yeah. And, um, and this is a um, really effectively acted film and Liam Neeson is particularly good and at the start I thought it was actually going to be a straight ahead drama to tell you the truth a gritty drama that's how it was mm. it was sort of um set up right at the beginning because um Liam Neeson's character you know loses his job that he's had for like, I think it was like 10 years he had his job nice bushy job and um and all of a sudden one day he gets fired and you know he's, he's got kids to feed and two mortgages to pay off so um that's obviously um, a real downer it is yes and he and he doesn't um tell his wife immediately no does he so um so he tries to keep it to himself um at the beginning of the film so um he's pretty much on a downer mm. <laughs> at the start mm. and um so that obviously from that um you know, plot set up. I thought it was going to be a, a straight ahead, gritty, realistic, you know, film that it was going to be, but um, and it ends up um, morphing into a thriller film more than a straight ahead drama. Mm. And there's lots of um, thrills and spills and um, unexpected moments. Yes. In this, and um, and and all I can can say is, who's Prin? <laughs> that, that's the person he was after. He didn't know who Prin was, but he found out who Prin was. Didn't he? Yes, yes. It comes. Well, this is good because this movie comes to a conclusion. You find things out, and it ends. <laughs> it concludes like a, you know a couple yeah. of other movies that we've seen recently, which is a bit of a breath of fresh air. And obviously, um, as I said, Lee and Leeson was in a strong, um, you know, emotional performance, and um, Sam Neill comes in at the end. As the um, head of police, but all the, not all the police are good, are they? All of them? And no, this, they're not. Um, which is a, one of the main um, telling points of this plot. So, um, and basically, a um, the thriller on a I wouldn't say a runaway train, but put it this way: Liam Fe Neeson feels like it's a runaway train because he's trapped. Mm. <laughs> mm. He's trapped in there until he he gets to the um, station. You know yes. that. Um, the last station on the train, I think, I think that train stops at. So, um, mm. and um, as I said, um, 
it's basically um, in a lot of um, fights. There's a lot of arguing throughout the whole film. Because he, he and he tries to con a couple of the other um, people in the train into thinking that's a hypothetical situation, and it's not real. But of course, it is real. <laughs> He's about getting some feedback off the other um, characters. He is just mm. to um, help him out in his situation. Because, um, as I said, he's after the code name of the person. It's called Prim. It is, and yes, he does gonna, find, and he does mm. find Prim in the end. He's given course. a task. Well, we won't tell you all the whole story, Michael. But, but I'm not away. telling the whole story. But I'm telling you that it ends. Yes, yeah. it does end. That's right. It does end. And so he won't be, seem to be a sequel. So he won't be left high and dry. Yes, <laughs> yes. And so, without giving too much away, it is a high action film, as you would expect with Liam Neeson. Most films, Liam Neeson seems to do a, a full on action films. Usually, there's some kind of family involved with Liam Neeson's action films, and that is the case here. Although the family is a very small part really in the background in this film uh, as opposed to other films he's done where the, the family have been right there on the journey with him mostly. So it, it is, there's some brilliant acting in this film. I think Liam did a great job. I mean, considering it was kind of minimal cast really, there weren't that many casts really as, as the main actors, uh, although there were a lot of extras obviously, a lot of extras on the, on the train, etc. Uh, but generally there, there were a few main key players in this in this film. And so when Liam loses his job, then he's presented with an opportunity to, to, to basically make a lot of money in a short amount of time. And what this movie really made me think is who and what is really controlling the world. There's, it actually was quite scary, the power that these people had, offering Liam a certain amount of money to do this task, and the things they could do, they could just make people disappear. And they would show him that they could make people disappear. So he didn't realise what the hell he was getting himself involved in when he said yes to this. And then when he wanted to pull out, his life was in danger. So mm -hmm. it was a very thrilling movie. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time uh, wondering what was going to happen. And it was really... There were quite a few twists and turns and not at all. it wasn't at all what I was expecting. And I guess that's the thing about this film. It kept you guessing. It kept the suspense. There was some full-on action. There was a bit of, I'd say even a bit of um, violence in there. There was a little bit of violence and, and you know, some, some killings going on and things. So there was, you know, a little bit of action and you had to constantly watch your back and watch your sides and watch watch all around you and be very aware as, as Liam Neeson uh, is so good at portraying with other films that he does. So I think overall, I thought it was a great film. And there were a few moments there that were a little bit slow for me, although I was still in suspense the whole time. So even the slow moments still had me in suspense, wondering what the hell was going to happen with this film right through to the end. So it actually went really quick for me. The film didn't seem to last a long time because it was so enthralling and so thrilling. So I give the film four stars. Yeah, I give it four and a half. Okay. And Liam Neeson does have some good action scenes in this film. Some of the um, moments here remind me of um, perhaps some of the Indiana Jones mm -hmm. um, stunts, I guess you could say. I'm not going to tell you exactly, um, you know, the stunts that he pulls in the film, but um, mm. there's some good scenes. There are some good scenes. With um, Liam Neeson in the train. Good action <laughs> scenes. Put it that way. Mm. That, you, that you don't want to miss. Yeah. So one um, which um, are quite on the edge of your seat, breathless, yeah. and exciting. It was, it's interesting how all the main characters were set up as well, like how the, how the characters were portrayed. They're really quite unique characters. Each of the mm -hmm. main characters were very unique and and it was a good cross-section of what you would expect on a train, I guess. So, you know, you, people from all walks of life on this train and with the puzzle that Liam is there to solve and what he's asked to do, uh, he's really caught between a rock and a hard place in the end where he either has to pull this off and make it work or his life and his family's life is at stake. Bit of a, it's Hitchcockian, and, Hitchcock and, you know, um, mm. thriller mm. with a bit of um, adventure, sort of Indiana Jones thrown in as well. So, um, yes. So that's, that gives you an idea of what sort of film that it is. Yeah. Great, <laughs> Indiana great Jones, action. you know, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Um, combined with, um, what would you say, with a good Hitchcock film? 
Uh, the birds. The birds. <laughs> I like the birds. Of course, Tippy you like the birds. Well, I've interviewed Tippy. Maybe Hedren. North by Northwest. Maybe it's, it's sort of a plot twist like that, doesn't it? North by Northwest, combined with Indiana Jones. Right, <laughs> right. The birds. That, that's like... taken. It's kind of and crossed with speed as well. I like the birds. I interviewed Tippy Hedren, who was the actress. Yeah, she was, was the, yeah. Melanie yeah. Griffith's mother, and she was attacked by ravens in the birds so that was very memorable for me i remember that scene very strongly from my childhood that black and white movie where she this blonde lady skinny blonde lady is attacked by all these ravens not crows i said crows so she said no they're ravens so ravens are bigger than crows apparently i did hear i did hear that um alfred hitchcock actually um made the actors you know locked them in a room with live birds mm -hmm. at one stage just to mm -hmm. um just to make it real Right. So um, that that made him, the actors more even frightened of the um, of birds when they came to the scene. Mm. <laughs> he tried to generally frighten mm. them. Mm. Well, she did it, it was a great director. Mm, he was. Tippy. He was. And Tippy has some interesting stories about Alfred Hitchcock. But anyway, that was another interview I did. So yeah, overall four stars. Both of both were your four and a half. So we, we've rated it pretty highly. This film. So if you've seen the film, what did you think of the film? We would love to hear what you have to say about it. And any final comments before we wrap up, Michael? Just think, um, if you were desperate for money, what would you do? Mm. Would you do what Liam? Um, does in this film? Mm. I'd say most people would, you know. I'd say most people would, would because he said yes without knowing fully what he was getting himself into and then by that stage he was in too deep. So so I guess the question is what would you do for money and if you realised things weren't going to work out the way that you thought they would work out, what would you do then? Yeah, because as, as it points out in the um, trial, he does pick up an initial, what was it, $75,000 mm -hmm. that he gets um, directed to by the lady on the train. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, but obviously he's going to get a, a bigger sum, yeah. If he identifies, you know, prim. <laughs> mm. So um, yes. And police so what, corruption. What would you what would you do for money? What would you do for money? And police corruption is in this film, and of course it's in real life. So there is a little bit of, you know, art imitating life, I guess, going on in this film. And yeah, it's it's. I actually really felt for Liam's character too. I thought um, I thought he. He he was very relatable and very um, yeah. I, I felt something for him, you know, and I think that's that's important in a film to really feel something for the lead character. Otherwise, I guess you don't care whether he lives or dies, you know. So there is a bit of compassion there and and a bit of wanting wanting to see him succeed in this quest. Well, everyone's probably suffered the um, you know predicament of losing their jobs, so that yeah. so the financial future is not. Um, is uncertain, isn't it, mm. if you lose a job? Mm. And what would you do if your family was at stake? You know, that that's something that was And was any had children that were going off to um, mm. university mm. or college, if I recall, so, um, yeah. and two mortgages to pay off. Yeah. So um, he's, he's got to get money coming in somehow. Mm. So, um, yeah, yeah. So the things he does. So mm -hmm. watch this movie, The Commuter, to see what does Liam Neeson do for some money in this film. What does he brave and what does he take on and how does he do it? Very interesting to watch and uh, so interesting. You know what twists and turns are coming. That's right. You never know what's around the corner you on that train ride. You won't predict it and we didn't. <laughs> no. That's for sure. Yeah. So it's interesting how how interesting the film was with pretty much once one location shoot mainly the whole time. Mm -hmm. It was just mainly on this train. And it's interesting, you know, how it kept you. Like a rope. Kept Alfred Hitchcock's rope hat was set in the one room. Right. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> that claustrophobic. Right. And also, I think Rear Window as well. The two okay. Alfred Hitchcock movies were set in one room. Mm, mm. And Saw was another one, I think, that they mainly, mainly did shot that in one room. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yes, very, very interesting. And uh, enjoy. Love to hear your thoughts. If you haven't subscribed already to Alden Alternate channel on YouTube, where you can see all our other movie review episodes. This is episode 21 today. And uh, you can also like our Facebook page, Movie Review TV, as well. If you like thrillers. You'll be thrilled by this. Yes, you will. So moving you at the movies. Thanks for watching Movie Review TV. And we'll be back soon with more fantastic movie reviews. Bye for now. Bye-bye.